Hello everybody. This is part one of two part video that I'm going to tell you why I put silicone on top and bottom of the transformer when I mount them into a metal chassis. Let me sit down. Now, recently I have put out several shots that showing that I put silicone on top and bottom of the transformer before mounted on the chassis. And many of you have assumed that was because of the vibration control, um, the coupling to the metal chassis, and um, so the vibration of the transformer doesn't transmit to the metal chassis as much. That, those are benefit and those are some of the reason. But that was not the main reason when I first started. The main reason when I first started was because I have found out the rubber washer is just not good enough and I, I'm going to show you why. Because the transformer, um, I also need a ruler. Let me get a ruler to show you why. The ruler, I need a straight edge to show you. So, transformer, sometimes they have wire sticking out. It's not a bad design, it's just the way it is. Sometimes they use a thicker wire, sometimes they use thinner wire, but in this case, they use thicker wire because it's a high flux transformer. They have less wire and there are more space between them. This space, you can see, you can see that, okay, if I can see you, you can see me through the gap. So if I put a, if I put a straight edge on it, you can see a lot of, lot of bumps and a lot of dips. And so when, when you mount the transformer with the supplied the rubber washer, which they usually supply two of this, one for top and one bottom, and it's very thin, they go like this on top and the bottom, and metal this with a dimple, you go on top, the bolt go through it, clamp them together. And when you clamp them together, the metal piece especially on the bottom, assuming your chassis is not going to flex a lot. Now this flex a little bit, which is a little better, but it's not so much better. But assuming your chassis is a thick piece of aluminum or a thick piece of, uh, of steel, it doesn't flex, shouldn't be flexing anyway. So when you push it down, imagine this. When you push a flat metal on top of the transformer where you have wires sticking up, the pressure point will be on the wire. So the harder you press, the harder you push the, the wire and the metal chassis against each other and, the, and, and it's starting, it will start to cut through the rubber washer because that's the pressure point. The empty spot, the empty spot where there is no wire is not holding a transformer. And that's the problem. That, that's the problem start because all the pressure between the transformer and the, and the metal chassis are within that few pieces of wire and that's like a, a dull knife. The harder you push, the harder you press on it, it's like press, harder you press on it, it just eventually just cut through and in my experience, that's what happened. And I get two older ones. See those, all those dimple? See those marks? Those are wire marks. This is about 10 years old. This is the wire mark they push right against on the transformer. Now the transformer is still working. And the miner seems okay because the transformer is not moving. But how, for how long? Your, your, your amps going to be shipped around. No, I, know, I know you're not going to ship around every day. But what happened after shipping? After, after shipping 5, 10 years, if you move around, if that actually move, and you know how the career gets... It's not so much about the people in the courier, it's actually the machine. The machine, the warehouse, it bounces the box around, they throw it around. It's not the people. The people don't even want to waste their energy to throw your box around. But the machine itself push against each other and that, that's how you shake the, 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 the component inside the box and that's how things can move inside the box. And when it moves, that means create friction and that's, you can do this, you can do this, who knows. But that's the problem. If you don't have enough cushioning, let's not call it insulation, cushioning, that's eventually you're going to wear out the cushion because it's so thin. And the 
Insulation between the wire of the transformer and the metal chassis are the rubber washer. This is the only thing I rely on. Now the, the mylar is also insulation. The enamel coating is also insulation. Even the paint on the metal is also insulation. But those are not reliable insulation. This is the only reliable insulation. And if you cut through this, the rest are just not reliable. And I tell you, I show I can actually show you one of these holes with a fresh light. This one you can actually see through it. You can actually see through this. See. This is a small hole, okay, and I have another big hole here. That's a bigger hole. Now this side, that's, no, it can, this is a bigger hole. Yeah, I can actually see the little light through my monitor on the camera, so you can see it. Now there's two holes, two holes on this rubber washer. This is the bottom one. The top one's not as bad, but you can still still see all the dimple mark. But this this one actually cut through. So that's my main reason of putting silicone on top and bottom of the transformer. And and as soon as you put silicone on, because silicones are flexible, when you put it on, it will fill up, it will fill out all the empty space. And so as soon as you fill out all this empty space, then the surface is even and the pressure on the transformer is even and then this, the, it, it will just spread out to the whole bottom of the transformer and the top of the transformer. It's not just a few points on those wire anymore. So that's the main reason I was starting to put silicone on top and bottom of the transformer when I mounted on the metal chassis. Not the vibration, that was the bonus. But the, but the, the avoiding this damage is the main reason. And and it's, as it turns out, it, it's great. It just vibration controls all the damping. The tr you can even feel the metal chassis vibration when the transformer actually vibrates a lot because of the silicone. And it, but it also takes a lot longer to do. The top and bottom has to wait for at least two days to do two days to cure before you can use it. So every transformer is four days before I can use it from the shelf and if I don't do mass production so I can I don't I don't just silicone 20 30 40 transformer before I run the production so that's one of the reasons my lead time is long but I think it's worth it I personally would do it myself um, there are several uh, customers saying like I want my amp the way that I want to build it I wouldn't go that far because I also do colorful stuff that you might not want to put at home but I, I understand what they mean. They, this is the way I want it. I do not want any, my transformer mounted any other way. I would not buy any other amp that mount the transformer the other way. There are other, other reasons, other way that you can mount transformer to avoid this kind of damage because they are manufacturer offering the mounted transformer inside a plastic containers filled up with raised, uh, resin. That's one way to be very safe there would be almost no chance of electrical shots outside to the metal chassis. But there's also add weight, uh, cost more. This costs more in labor, but again, I am a one person manufacturing, so there is no, no concern on that one, because this is the way I want to do it. But if you want to do mass production, and the contain uh, pasta container resin would be one way. Um, there are other ways to do it, and I have tried using two or three layers of rubber washer. It's not helping because it does not fill, it doesn't fill up the empty space. It doesn't matter how many rubber washer you use, it's still not filling up the empty space. The silicone fills up the empty space. That's the beauty, that's the advantage of, the, of having silicone. Um, there are, I have seen people using uh, carpet layer cup underlay yeah that that's kind of have some cushioning but again it's not even the space that space you still have to fill it up the only way you can fill it up is the plastic container with resin now the plastic container with resin that's that's great as um, although the resin is very toxic so silicone is less less toxic everything's toxic so but 
the reason, the, the problem with reason is to me, cost more. You got to do it a whole bunch of the time. I cannot do custom job with that kind of design. And and uh, and second, it's it doesn't. It's also enclose the transformer a lot more than the silicone. I still have this much space, open space for heat ventilation. But when you close it up, it blocks the heat. So you have to design a transformer has a bigger margin, which means cost more, weight more, physically bigger. So those are the disadvantage compared to just using silicone, unless. There's another reason that manufacturer tell you that you can pot the transform inside a uh, past the container with resin will reduce the noise, uh, which I don't believe. I don't believe uh, based on my experience because I have at least three manufacturers that offer me that two of them actually did that and none of them actually work. So I would not want to spay, waste any more money on those things and buying tiny bit of advantage and lots of disadvantage with a lot of money. So it's just not my way to do things. So anyway, so I that's uh, that's a little bit of rant and I'm not sorry to say that. And that would be part two coming on and the, the, it, I will tell you why other manufacturers cannot do it the way that I am doing in part two. And I'm going to plan to propose part two four days from now and I will put the link part 2 link in the description when the part 2 is up. Until then, bye! I'm still here. Because if you watch the video to till this point, I'm going to tell you why I have part 2. The reason I have part 2 is I screw up. Originally, when I did the video, I was just going to do like one big video part one, part two together, which has no part one, part two. Then in the middle of the, of the of the filming of the video, I pressed the wrong button and shut off the camera. Then I just took part two and started, I would say, this is part two, I screw up, turn, turn off the camera, I'm going to join the part two and part one together when I, when I put it up. Well, guess what? When I start to try to join them together, I couldn't find part one, so I probably delete part one accidentally. So it's my screw up. So I have to take, I will do this, take two of part one, so I can post this part one first before the part two, otherwise part two is not gonna make any sense to you. So thank you for watching for this, to this point so I can tell you my screw up. And I'm not ashamed about my screw up. I'm not going to edit. I, I'm not going to edit part two either. I'm not going to retake part two either because I just didn't feel like it. So I'm going to go around and turn off the camera now. Until then, this is bye. Of take two of part one.